Hey everybody, how you doing? I hope everything is well. Uh, yeah, as uh, stream quality automatically lowered due to internet connection. Yeah, what's going on here? Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I hope everybody is well. If you can hear me, say we can hear you in the comments as usual. Always double check the audio just before, you know. Um, cheers. So, Midnight in Indonesia. Uh, boy, what's going on here? Hello, Taz from New York. All right, cool, cool. Of course we do. Good vibes. Good, good. So, is everybody well? It's kind of quiet today. Only eight people. We'll wait to see if uh, we get enough people on board. Okay, 16. Good, good. I don't know, according to the interwebs, there might be a um, connection issue. MCX, hello, how are you? I'm very good, Dion, I'm very good. Thanks for logging in. So I'm just gonna wait for a few more people to get on. We only got 23. And we'll get into the subject of the day, sujet du jour, and then I will jump into a little bit of Q&A. Mm. Good, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, yeah, you never know. That's good, good, good. How are we doing? 29. I'll wait about a minute. If uh, you're watching the replay, you could probably find links below where people index the various sections. You can jump into the main content. So today's subject, very quickly, it's going to be um, quickly fix your JS bugs. I had a question put to me. Uh, uh, some JS bug related questions. So I thought I'd, I'd drop a few tips for you guys. A little Christmas present, early Christmas present. We can hear you all the way in Texas. I got a loud voice. Yeah, all right. So I'm back to the old mic. Uh, the other one people were complaining about. How are we doing here? 35? Eh, slowly people are getting on. You know what? Switzerland. Very cool. All right. So what I'll do is I'm just going to jump into it. And the snoozers, um, of course, I was going to say you snooze, you lose. But uh, YouTube tends to be a little bit slack when it comes to notifications from my here. All right, let me just jump into the subject. So how to quickly fix your JS bugs. Four tips I want to give. Um, first of all, preemptively, you want to write simple as code as possible. Simple, simple code, fine-grained object, simple code, much easier to debug, right? Uh, number one, and number two, don't uh, be afraid to use Google. I get a lot of people and they uh, they'll send questions and if they would just paste their error message into Google, they get their answer. So don't be afraid to use Google, paste the error messages that you get. That will help with the debugging. This it's, it's pretty it's not like uh, groundbreaking stuff here, right? Another thing you should do, something I teach, is you should practice breaking your code. Break your code. So when you get a piece of code to work, break it. I teach this in my courses. Break the code. Why would you want to break your code once you get it working? Because you want to see the error message that the breaking of the code generates. And in time, when you do this more and more and more, you're going to start recognizing error messages. You're going to start understanding what the error messages actually mean. And like any other skill, practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the better you are. So by breaking your code in, in, a, in a controlled environment where you know what you've actually broken and you see the error messages, you do this a, a bunch of times, next thing you know, your ability to debug will increase quite a bit. So practice breaking your code on a regular basis just so you start understanding error messages better and you understand the behavior of the error dumps that you get with whatever language, we're talking JavaScript, but these rules apply to any language. Um, and finally, um, use a good IDE, uh, integrated development environment with good debuggers built in. You could actually use the browser tools too, they can help you build for JavaScript. They have built in, well, client-side JavaScript. They have built-in uh, capabilities in the browser dev tools that allow you to debug. Learn those. Those are part of the game. 
as I teach and talk about in, uh, often enough, uh, learning to program is much more than just the languages. There's a whole bunch of other things you got to learn, including the tool sets and debuggers and IDEs. And in the case of JavaScript, the uh, browser dev tools are important tools that you should learn. That's why I teach the basics of that in the JS course and so on. I introduce you to these tools so because uh, they're going to make your life a lot easier. Let me tell you a story. Way back in the day when I was a young nerdling noob, uh, when I was writing Java code for the first couple of years, I refused to use an IDE. I was, I was a tough man and I would just use a simple text editor and write my JavaScript code. I thought uh, erroneously that writing code with an IDE was kind of cheating because the, the IDEs, the integrated development environments, the coding, uh, the coding software, they will uh, help you with code completion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought that was kind of cheating, which was silly, because what they do is they actually teach you to write code better, faster, and more easily. And uh, when I finally sort of got off that psychological uh, hang-up of wanting to be a purist, uh, simple text editor coder, I, uh, when I got my first IDE, I forget which one it was, um, for Java, all of a sudden, my productivity just jumped through the roof. And in fact, I learned how to code Java much more effectively because it would suggest packages and it would suggest uh, methods that I was not necessarily aware of uh, when I was writing. So it became much more, uh, a much more dynamic, fun, fast process. So yes, learn your IDEs, learn your debugging tools when working with JavaScript. Any other language. So there you go. I got this done in about five minutes. That's it, let me rehash for those who are wondering. My top four tips for uh, quickly fixing bugs in JavaScript. Preemptively, you should write simple, fine-grained code, small objects, objects that have one uh, purpose, so it's easy to track and pinpoint. Um, then you use, I, I'll, I'll throw this in, when you're talk, talking about writing simple objects and simple code, um, you should use something like, uh, there is a design pattern called composition, which you should look up. And it basically allows you to reuse your code in an efficient way within the object oriented, uh, within any object, object oriented language. But composition, uh, that uh, design pattern allows you to more easily isolate bugs in code. Just, you know, off, I'm not gonna demo it here, but it does. So use, look at composition in terms of your architecture, that will help you with your coding as well. So yeah, so write simple, fine grade code. Uh, don't be afraid to use Google and Stack Overflow. Uh, you get an error message, if it's not directly obvious to you, instead of messing around for 20 minutes, just cut and paste that error and you probably get your answer pretty quickly. Uh, number three, practice breaking code on a regular basis, especially when you're learning. Like I teach that in, my, in all my programming courses, break the code. So you see the error message generated, and then you can get a, you're gonna get good at that. So when you get good at it, you'll be able to, you'll see errors, and you go, oh, I know what that error is probably what it probably is. It's not it's not it's not some nebulous thing, you know. If you're using a good language, I remember <laughs> I remember back in the early days when I was using classic Microsoft ASP, classic, not ASP.NET, but classic ASP. I think. The last version of that uh, framework is ASP2. Anyway, I was using classic ASP, and Microsoft, that was Microsoft's web, first web framework, which was uh, page-based, which was groundbreaking at the time. And uh, Microsoft doesn't get enough credit from a lot of the developer communities because they do good stuff. I'm not saying they're perfect, but they do do good stuff, especially for development. Anyhow, so I remember at the time, their error messages were, were, were really bad. Like you would get like, you would have an error and it would be like 8,000, 105, 6, 7, 8, 9, X, 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 number 2345. I was like, what does that mean? You know, it was terrible. Which is a good tip, by the way. When you're writing your own objects in classes uh, and you got um, your exception checking in there, you're basically built in error checking within your own objects. Make sure that the error messages are very self-describing. Don't, you know, don't use the, you, you have, you have a couple of levels of error messages in code that you write. You can have the catch-all, which is, there was an error, there was an exception, good luck. Or there's more fine-grained errors. So there's usually a, um, 
an exception or error hierarchy in your object creation. And you can go really deep. And of course, in the Java community, it went, it went a little nuts as it typically did. But you would have your fine grain errors, so very specific errors you're looking for, whether it be, uh, you know, like the database is, you don't get a connection to the database or an input uh, error. You know, uh, and then you had the catch-all error. Just, you know, if, if, you, if some unknown, unpredictable error happens, you sort of catch it, and uh, at least the system doesn't fail. You can fall back. Now, what happens when you're in crunch time and you're writing a lot of code and you've got to hit the deadlines, a lot of people will, will just go with the catch-all error. We've got to get this out. Just do the catch-all. Be careful with that because that can lead to tremendous problems in terms of debugging, all right? Um, so practice breaking code, yeah, and then get used to the coding tools. So in JavaScript world, client side, understand the browser dev tools, there's debuggers in there. Uh, then find a good IDE, integrated development environment, or any code editor that will allow for uh, debugging, it's easy. So there you go. I hope that uh, that helps. Those are my four tips. I threw in some extra bonus tips and uh, that's it. So. Let us get into a few uh, uh, let's get into a few questions. Were dinosaurs coding 7,500 years ago? Yes, I was teaching them how to code uh, back in the day. The problem I had especially was with the T-Rexes because they had such little hands they had a hard time hitting the keyboard. But yeah, they did, they did. Uh, Fang interviews are done without IDEs. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they expect you to know your stuff, but IDEs could be good teaching tools for you, right? Because code completion and so forth. So um, again, I was a purist back in the day, the first uh, couple years of writing Java code professionally. Uh, I would just use a notepad, which I think is silly today. Uh, check, check out React Server Components. There you go. Check it out. Hey, Steph, any courses, videos planned for WebRTC? No, my next set of courses are, uh, I feel like in terms of the code courses and the programming courses I provide, I feel like I, I pretty much cover what you need. You do that, you complete my, my full stack and my Python, you're good to go. You can jump into all kinds of different things and learn them very quickly because I cover all the key concepts and techniques that are pretty consistent across all languages. With the exception is I don't get into um, Machine learning. Although I do teach Python, you got to learn all the coding to get into Python. But I'm not a machine learning guy, so I don't I don't try to teach it. I believe that the teachers should know what they're doing, right? It's like I didn't feel comfortable teaching people uh, martial arts or how to fight until I did it for a while, and I didn't been in a bunch of fights. Then I was able to teach it. Same thing with development. So I would be reluctant to put out courses on subjects that I'm not. Uh, I don't have practical commercial experience with. But uh, yeah, I'm going broader into things I think uh, is neglected in the coding community, educational space, uh, you know, communication skills, psychology skills, um, how to get how to get jobs, uh, how to, you know, I did the freelancing, of course, uh, entrepreneurship. So these are all things that really help out your uh, career as a developer. Like ask any experienced developer somebody with five years or more experience in real world development, ask them what's more important, learning a new language or framework or learning how to communicate better with your coworkers or your boss or your client. They will all tell you communication skills, uh, interpersonal skills are much more important. So that's why I'm going to get into that. That's what's coming out now. Um, is being, is being, bringing, I guess it's being DBA a good way to start coding? Will Azure technology put, put to sleep SQL servers? I don't think so. Uh, DBA is a database administrator for people who don't know. It's, it's, it's not development. It's being a DBA. It's a it's different thing. It's both good. You have to decide what you like. I would sort of touch on it, touch on development, see what you prefer. A DBA has a very different role, and it's a very different type of job than being a developer. But uh, they're both good. Will Azure put uh, SQL servers to sleep? Put sleep SQL, I assume you mean uh, uh, cancel them? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not everybody's uh, into a particular um, 
this uh, particular vendor stack, right? This question may not be relevant to the problem. How to be good at web design? Well, there's a few things you got to do. You first, you got to learn your fundamentals of the languages and the web stack and so forth. If you want to be client side, more UI user interface specific, then you got to learn your basic design principles, basic UX principles. That being said, I think every web designer should learn at least the basics of the full stack so you know how to deliver your front end so that it's friendly for the back end developers. And uh, yeah, you also have to figure out where, where your strengths lie. If you're design centered, or if you're a design centric guy or girl, or if you're uh, more of a, you know, a system based person, you got to play your strengths. Again, I don't, again, I get this from my martial arts as well. You figure out the type of fighter you are, and then you, 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 you take that to the high level. Uh, you don't try to be good at something you're not naturally gifted at. So one of the, the great thing about web design, what the web space in general, is that you could, you could have the artistically inclined people excel there. You can have the architecturally inclined people excel there. You could have the minutia inclined people excel there. It's a very broad category of development. Should I study a master's degree to get better position? Does it really worth it? I think experience. It's probably more important than a master's degree. Um, you know, there's culture in different businesses. So you might get into a huge corporation where they say, well, if you get your master's, we'll increase your salary. That happens sometimes, not often though. And, um, and a lot of times they'll pay for that if they feel it's valuable. But uh, I don't know, the trend is actually away from institutionalized education. Uh, thanks for doing a live at your compatible time. Eh, no worries, no worries. I figured I, sh I figured you guys were due, right? Right. Hello, sir. Do I need to learn DS algo, algo uh, for the Mern stack? Don't know. Don't know. I don't know what DS, which mean that uh, what that means actually. Should I delay graduation for internship? Ah, how far away are you from graduation? Are you incurring debt? Um, I don't know. What is your advice for those who are working and in the same time studying to be a developer and switch career? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Okay, so you, you got a current career that's not development and you're starting to be a developer. Uh, transition. If that's it. So you got to transition. Don't drop your job and then all, you, all of a sudden you got no income. Transition. Learn your development. Start doing some freelance gigs on the side so you get some experience, build your resume. And only when you get that development job or your freelance career is really taking off do you drop the old job. You want to keep the money flowing, right? Unless you got a lot of money saved up, like, you know, years worth, then maybe you can just start, dive into development. Or maybe you just hate your current job so bad. I don't know. The text editors that come pre-installed with Linux distros tend to be coding sensitive. They're not as good as an IDE, but much better than Notepad. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see what we got here. Noob question. All right, Christian, let's see what we got. Just a noob question. Is Kali going to replace Java entirely? No, but it's probably going to become the dominant language for uh, Android development. Why? Because Google says use Kotlin, and Kotlin's faster, easier. Faster, easier at right time always uh, tends to win. I'm already struggling uh, in Java Android app development. I would switch over to Kotlin because even Google said use Kotlin. That being said, I'm not sure what the job situation is. I would imagine it will eventually all pivot to Kotlin, and I know comp companies are going to want to pivot to Kotlin for their native Android development simply because it's faster and they just want to get stuff done as quickly as possible. Yo, Stefan, question. I noticed your web fundamentals course are around five years old, but I would like to purchase. Is the content relevant to today's world functions, sections, etc.? Well, I update the original versions are that old. Well, some of them are, but I update them on a need to nerd basis. So um, fortunately for me, 
the fundamentals have not changed in the last five years or longer. So there's not, I've made some changes here and there, like I had to make an update to the, uh, the SQL course, but you'll be good. You'll learn a lot. Check out my reviews, the recent reviews, people from just a few months ago doing my courses from scratch, getting jobs. So no, no, you're fine. Mm. There you go, Matthew Smith. The content on his courses are ever great. Exactly. I'll change them if there's a need. I'll change them if there's a need. But uh, as I said, in the old days, 30 is not too old to be a developer. It's quite young. In the old days, talking 20 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, the technology, the web tech stack would change very quickly. Once every two years would be some significant changes. But in around 2012, when HTML5 came into play uh, and took over from XHTML and Flash got booted out, it's pretty settled in terms of like the fundamentals, in terms of JavaScript, HTML, CSS. The only change really in the last, since that time is the, uh, the fact that you can now use CSS, CSS Grid in Flexbox, whereas before it was uh, old school layout and positioning, which still you find a lot of sites that do it, so I keep that, it's there. But um, beyond that, you know, it's pretty static, man. You'll be good. Uh, let's see, Matthew, hey Matthew, how are you doing? I appreciate that. Ho, 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 Fiong Rejoy. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. What is the best web stack in your opinion? It's based on the job. It's, I'm, I'm a guy that says it's based on the job. Um, I've talked about this in other lives. You can check them out. Um, yeah, if you're, you know, if it's a, if it's a big uh, company where they've invested tens of millions of dollars in Java, the best stack for them is probably going to be Java, right? They're not going to want to switch out, you know. Uh, if it's a small business that's already got uh, investment in there, some PHP-based system, that's what they're going to use. They're going to want to use that. you got to understand that a lot, the, the technologies in terms of the stacks, they're all really good now. They're all really good with some exceptions. Um, and so you can't really go wrong. Like, I'm going to do a video uh, where I'm going to show, like, you pick any language, JavaScript, Node, there's some big players, uh, Netflix uses that, you know, uh, Java, Java web stack, that's um, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, it's, I think it's Python, uh, Twitter, they use Ruby, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, WordPress, you know, WordPress, okay, it's not a website, but it's one of the most successful apps of all time, PHP, Facebook, PHP, you know, so you can find examples of highly, highly successful projects and websites in almost any stack, you know, .NET, uh, MS, MSD, MSDN, uh, MSN, you know, they're all pretty good, man. Uh -huh. All right. All right, Lingua file. I bought your Web Fundamentals series a couple of days ago and started the CSS course. I already learned HTML from a similar course. I like how you take your time to explain things clearly. Ah, I'm glad. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I try, I try to deliver something different, you know, to the market. I could run through things quickly like everybody else, but I figured better step by step, get you prepared, then you can do whatever you want. Thanks for the reply. Cool. You're always an inspiration, Mr. Sven. I'm glad I could help you, Christian. I thought you were going to talk, talk about TypeScript. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, TypeScript uh, strongly typed easier to debug. That's the problem with JavaScript in general. That's a good point. Uh, JavaScript is, is a weird language. It's a weird language. And it's inconsistent in some of the things that it does. So it can be a little tricky to uh, code with. Uh, it could be tricky to, uh, that's a very good point. It could be tricky to debug because it's very loosey-goosey of a language. So you can do some stuff that are, uh, you wouldn't be able to do in other languages. Like I, one example I like to give is you can um, you can concatenate, you can, in other words, add together an integer, which is a number, with a string of text, 
and JavaScript will turn it into a string. So if you added like the word Stefan plus and then 69, it, it would JavaScript would, would, would resolve that to Stefan 69, which would be a, a string. In other languages, that would be an error. And this is good that it would be an error because it catches a potential bug there. So, you know, that's just one example. It's this uh, silly JavaScript stuff. Ah. How do you get job safety in the web development field? By being a very good communicator, saying what you do and doing what you say, uh, having good interpersonal skills with your coworkers and your boss, first and foremost. That's what's really going to make the difference. How are we doing for time here? All right, good, good. All right. Um, all right. So, any other questions? Where is the nice seven? So, well, I guess not. I guess we're going good. That's how JS works. Yeah, JS is weird. There's other things too. It's uh, like in. Even though Java is more complex in many respects because it's a strongly typed language and it's much more verbose, uh, in, in other ways it's easier because it's just much more consistent to learn. So I debate whether teaching, I debated that for a little while whether to teach Java or JavaScript first because of those reasons. Um, yeah, so. JavaScript, it is what it is. I'm not sure why. I forget why he made those those choices to design it that way. I've taken your Python course and the middle of your web dev course. I'll finish JS course today. Should I start building stuff now or finish the web dev course? My goal is freelancing. Finish, just finish the fundamental courses, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, PHP, SQL, and do the little the projects that are in those fundamental courses, you know, as you know, there are hundreds of video lessons there. Make sure you do all the quizzing. Then I would do two to three of the small projects, like the PHP CRUD and stuff like that. They don't I wouldn't do the big ones. Like I, I you know, I leave them there because people want me to leave them there. But I would, I would, I actually believe you shouldn't do these huge tutorials because they're just. They're, they're, they have learning value, there's no question, because they're gonna teach you a way of looking at code, but they're not the way. What you gotta realize as a professional developer, there's no the way. It all depends on the project at hand. So I try to get people into the coding ring. I encourage them as quickly as possible, because that's how you really learn. And you gotta understand, your job as a developer is to really figure out things and problem solve. Um, if you're doing anything serious on the web stack, for example, you're going to be using a framework at some point. Uh, so if, you're in, if you prefer Python web, you would use Django or Flask. If you prefer uh, PHP web, you will use Laravel, most likely, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you want to just take that leap of faith and just jump in there. Again, I learned this from experience as a developer, and I also learned to... Uh, you know, one or two a project, and then just get out there and do the real stuff, man. Uh, that's how you really learn quickly. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm struggling to learn coding. Is there a course you recommend to learn Java and Python? Yeah, check out my, my Python course. Uh, a, a lot of people tell me that they've tried many other courses and couldn't get it, and then they did my Python course. Check it out. Uh, you see the link below. I'm, you got a money back guarantee, you got nothing to lose. And there's also a certification bundle now, which is new. You can check that out. I'm pretty sure that you're gonna learn. Uh, what is your opinion or first thing to look at when testing a new web app that customers will be logging into? What is your opinion is the first thing to look at when testing a new web app that a customer Usability is number one, usability. Make sure that um, things that you want your users to find are really easy to find. That's number one. Number two, it should create a relaxed um, feeling when somebody hits your site, a relaxed feeling. It shouldn't be overwhelmed, it shouldn't be boring, it should just be relaxed and intuitive. We worked really hard for years on making Studio Web super easy to understand. So people just go, and they don't have to think about it. It's just like, it's just, if you have to have 
like you see sometimes in apps where they, you, know, you launch the app for the first time and they have little bubbles that pop up, say, hey, this, you can do this here and click to do this here. That to me is a crutch. The app should be self-evident, should be self-describing. So make sure it's just really easy. I used to call it, uh, I still do, the emotional snapshot. The first thing that you, the feeling you get when you come to a site or to an app, when you log in, you see it. Is do you feel overwhelmed? Is it very obvious where the user has to go first? Boom, I gotta go there. These are the things that really differentiate between successful and not so successful apps. For Apple, whether you love them or hate them, they're the most successful tech company in the world because of that, because their usability is, is really, really good. It, it not only is, and it's not perfect, there's some things that really frustrate me about it, but trust me, but overall though, it's, it's, it's stable, it's usable, it, it looks nice when you see it, and this is all part of the, uh, people, the impression people have with regards to your application. Uh, clean code. I know the pain. I have a medium project. We need a whole lot of refactoring. Refactoring another project is a pain. Oh, yeah. This is true. That's why it's simple code. What marks the, the, the difference between uh, an expert developer and one who's a, not so good is the expert developer writes super easy, simple to easy understand code. That's really what it comes down to. The expert developer's code is stupid simple. Simple is hard. That's what makes it. If your code is so complex and you, you're, you're, you're patting yourself over the back, and, oh, look how complex my code is, I would go, noob. I would, I would be not too pleased as a manager. Uh, make sure the code is simple. Uh, for security, what is your opinion is the first thing to look at when testing a new web, web customers will log in for security? Well, just the basics, you know, protect against SQL injection, SSLs employed. Uh, I used to do, um, I used to use off, obfuscation a lot. So I wouldn't have, uh, I would have indirect connections to uh, database calls. Um, you know, paths were not obvious as well, uh, routing and so on. Uh, there's all these different levels of security you can take, but there's basic stuff. So make sure you, you scrub all those things. Uh, is Java a valid option for programming a robot arm using control as Raspberry Pi? Because I see a lot of projects in Python for this, but Java is very seldom. I would stick to Python. If you see a lot, a lot of projects in Python, you don't want to code yourself into some niche technology, even if it's better. You know. Hi from Guatemala. Oh, not Guatemala. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Anyway, from Taiwan. Any recommendation on database design books, courses, or any resources? I would just do a search best database design books on Amazon. I don't know what the latest ones are. I have, I learned this stuff a long time ago, so I don't even know if my books are still, uh, the ones that I liked are still um, uh, published. They would still be good because nothing has changed in SQL in 20, 20 years. Can't I learn the fundamentals of backend with Node or PHP is the idea one for that. They're both fine, they're both fine. What do you think about Scala? Will F FP programming, functional program, become a better option in the future? I think it's going to be a more of a niche uh, type of programming, personally. But, you know, it's fine. I'm learning Java and JavaScript at the same time. Is it a good way of learning? I would learn one, fundamentals, and then learn the other so you don't mix them up a bit. But it's good to learn multiple languages. Like, in my courses, I teach three programming languages, uh, Python, JavaScript, PHP, and I use the languages as vehicles to teach particular concepts, although there's a lot of crossover. And what you'll see is when you learn your second and third language, it will give you clarity in terms of the first language uh, and the other languages that you learn. So when you learn multiple programming languages, when you get comfortable with them, you just get a deeper understanding of programming in general. Taking a break from work and self-learning new 
related skills, building projects, uploading, updating portfolio to find higher paying jobs, offers. Is this a good idea? Yeah, yeah. Always improve, you know, expand. I would let the market guide you a little bit. See where, where you might want to work. See what they're looking for. And then align your, your, uh, your work accordingly. All right. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate that. All right, let's talk about the new JavaScript feature on Chrome, top level await where you don't need to wrap await in asynchronous functions. Let's talk about that. Well, I have to look into that. I haven't looked into that in all honesty. That's cool. See, what that is showing is that um, for many years, Microsoft especially didn't take web development or web browser development as serious. They, they thought it was a threat, so they kind of disabled it. Uh, but they've since changed that or several years back, they've embraced it. So you see between Microsoft and Google, they're adding a lot more power to browser development. That's why I've told people, if you want to do mobile development, I would look to uh, PWAs first, which is progressive web apps, which is basically using web tech to build your, your mobile apps rather than native. Spencer Forrest, hi from France. No, he should say bonjour. J'espère que tout ça va bien, monsieur. Uh, MCX, I guess it's better to learn one by one, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, hello from Russia. How are you? I'm originally from, my, my family anyways, from the Ukraine. What's the difference between JavaScript and TypeScript? JavaScript is, uh, well, TypeScript is a, a superset, basically. It's on top. I believe it's a Microsoft product. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a cleaner version of JavaScript, essentially. It's, uh, it's, it's strongly typed. Uh, it's, 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 it's cleaner. So, and I, 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 if I understand, it compiles down. I've never used it. I just looked at it cle uh, quickly. It's kind of like... Um, in a sense, it's kind of like if you combine Java and JavaScript, you'd maybe TypeScript. In a sense, roughly. I know I'm going to get flack for that, but what kind of projects should I do after learning React? I mean, here the projects will get, I don't know, you have to check where here is. Depending on where you are in the world, uh, you'll get different demands. So, you know. Uh, Looks like it didn't, didn't remove my origin, original that I redacted. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I, what's this? I often find bugs in my Angular code. I live in Spain, but the S is silent. All right. Uh, let's see, Hamish. Uh, 6 a.m. in Australia. Hey, you're up early. I have used a lot of these languages for a few years and bought your courses to see if there were any holes in my knowledge. 10 and 10 would recommend fundamental courses for newer devs. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's the key. That's the key. I have clients using a point of sale system I developed. Hey, very cool. Each has some of their own special features. I advise them to migrate to an online system, which they all agreed. Any advice about the development? Woohoo! I don't know. I don't know what your stack is. I don't know what the uh, what your skill set is. Rather, I don't know what uh, uh, what what backend your client uses. Are they Microsoft centric? Are they not? Etc. 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 For Studio Web, do you allocate dedicated app instances for every client? No. Or do you have a multi-tenant app in the sense that every school is a role, an ID, and a database, and you filter on that? Uh, part two, I filter on that. I had at one point uh, had dedicated app instances, but it became too um, cumbersome in terms of updates and so forth. And... Uh, uh, servers and databases are so powerful that, uh, and we have an architecture that can support a huge number of schools without having to have dedicated app. But we could break it out if we wanted to, really. 
Uh, why do we really need Node.js? You don't really need it. I have my homework and I have a lot of problems. Help me, please. <laughs> oh, is Java FX dead in your opinion? I'm not sure what Java FX is, so I don't know. Uh, I just bought your fundamentals course, on, so I'm off to learn. Cool. Cheers. Thanks for picking up the course and uh, keep me in the loop. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Uh, thanks for the valuable advice. It has helped me a lot many times. Good. Hello from San Diego. Yeah, I know, San Diego Smith. Uh, I guess, I'm guessing you don't have any snow. Uh, <laughs> funny stuff. All right, how are we doing? All right, 40 minutes. Okay, guys. I'll answer one or two and I'm out of here. Hello from Lebanon. Hello from Jordan. Hey, hey, how you guys, how you guys doing? Stefan, what does Lizard Wizard course coming out? I'm pushing for January, pushing for January. Thanks for replies, love your videos, I appreciate that, thank you. Also, do you find algorithms and data structures equally more or less important than software development engineering skills? It depends what you're doing, but generally, my experience as a developer going back to the 90s, um, beyond very basic stuff, being an algorithm expert was not that important, just basics. Uh, data structures, again, just basics, you know, no, from my experience anyway, building business apps, you know, but if you got into uh, machine learning and so on, then it would be a different game, I'm sure. Uh, thanks for answering the multi-tenant question, you removed a stone from my shoe. Hey, I'm glad I could help, I'm glad I could help. Audio Steph, what's that mean? I guess you guys can hear me. I hope so. All right. Adios. Okay. Ciao. <laughs> uh, there you go. Rubbing it in. Rubbing it in. I did have an IPA last night, though. All right. Happy Merry Christmas, Stefan. You too. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, joining. And I uh, appreciate the questions. And... Uh, I'll answer Omar's question, then I'm out. Uh, hi, Vera. Quick question. I've been coding since I was young, and lately I started feeling like I'm losing my motive and fun. I used to have, I even stopped learning new subjects. Any advice? Take a little break, maybe, you know, maybe explore a different language or different type of coding. I don't know. If you, I've seen people, they'll have, some people have, you know, runs where they may code and have a great time for five, seven years, and then they want to go into, you may want to go into architecture or project management, you know? Um, it depends. I have some friends who stayed coding, they loved it, and they kept doing it for many years. Fantastic. I made that decision a long time ago. I love coding, and I didn't stop coding uh, per se. I said I couldn't become, I had to make a choice whether I was going to run the business uh, or I was going to be a deep coder. I had to, and it was very tough for me to leave day-to-day -day coding because I really loved it. But I made that choice to go away from day-to-day -day coding to managing developers and building my own stuff, my own systems at some point. So yeah, you got So maybe you may want to try that. Either try different languages, or maybe go into architecture, project management. That might be something you enjoy more. You know what I mean? All right. All right, so that's it. We're good. Thanks for joining. And if you uh, if you like the stream, give me a thumbs up. Oh, by the way, um, I started posting, you haven't seen if you're in the mentoring group, I started posting the live streams here. Uh, uh, with no ads in the private mentoring group. So I'm going to be mounting those over the next uh, few weeks. It's quite a few. So you're going to have a nice library there that you can refer to. Uh, if you're in the mentoring group. All right. Thanks, guys. And uh, I'll leave you with my, do I have my ASMR? I have my ASMR Cape Elizabeth uh, main video. So uh, this will relax you if you're a little intense right now. <laughs>